Hello, welcome. This is uh, Austin from T Classified. Today we are going to be looking at questions from motion. Questions from motion, the second topic in jump questions and uh, wire questions. Motion, motion types. So now we start. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. Share this video so that other people can benefit from it if you like this video. Now we get to the number one. It is observed that water will wet a clean glass because the a cohesion of water to glass is weaker than the cohesion of water molecules. Adhesion of water molecules is stronger than the cohesion of water molecules. Cohesion of water to glass is stronger than the cohesion of water molecules adhesion of water molecules is weaker than the cohesion of water molecules to the glass so the answer is c adhesion of water molecules is stronger than the collision of water molecules water does not this is the explanation to this answer water does not wet waxed surface because the cohesion forces within the drops are stronger than the adhesive forces between the drops and the wax. Water wets glass and spreads out on it because the adhesion forces between the liquid and the glass are stronger than the cohesion forces within the water. The sturdy force on the surface tension. So whenever you hear about cohesion, it means between a particular substance. Whereas adhesion is between two or more substances. So adhesion between water and glass particle is stronger. That's why it wears the glass. Whereas cohesion between its molecules is weak. The motion of smoke particles from a chimney is typical of what kind of motion does smoke particles make? A. Random motion B. Circular motion C. Oscillatory motion D. Rotational motion The smoke, all of us know that smoke makes random motion. So the answer is A. Random motion. Why? Brainer motion or pedicis is the random motion of particles suspended in a fluid liquid or gas resulting from their collision with the quick atoms and molecules in gas or liquid. A train with the initial velocity of 20 meter per second is subjected to a uniform acceleration of 2 meter per second square. The time required to bring the train to a complete halt is a 5 seconds B 10 seconds C 40 seconds D 20 seconds the answer is B 10 seconds how did we come about 10 seconds the initial velocity as we all know is given as 20 meter per second this is the initial velocity the deceleration is Deceleration is the opposite of acceleration, which is minus 2 meter per second. The time t at which final velocity is equal to zero is unknown. So using this formula, v equal to u plus a t. V as we know is zero because that's the final velocity. U, which is the initial velocity, is 20 meter per second. Deceleration is minus 2, then time you don't know. So make time the subject of the formula. Taking this 20 over, you have minus 20 equal to minus 2t. So make t the subject. You have minus 20 over 2. This is 2, not 10. Minus 20 over 2. Which will give us 10 seconds, which is the answer. So that makes b the answer. 10 seconds.
a car accelerates uniformly from rest at 3 meters per second square. Its velocity after traveling a distance of 24 meters is a car accelerates uniformly from rest at 3 meters per second square. Its velocity after traveling a distance of 24 meters is a 12 meter per second b 144 meter per second c 36 meter per second d 72 meter per second the answer is a 12 meter per second to solve it applying newton's equation of motion v squared minus u squared or v squared equal to u squared plus 2as so this is equal to v squared equal to u squared plus 2as since the car accelerates from rest since the car accelerates from rest Since the car accelerates from rest, initial velocity u should be equal to zero. So putting this in the formula, you now have v squared, this very v squared, is equal to u squared is already zero. So you only have 2as, and 2as is what? 2 times a, which is 3, times s, which is distance 24. So you have that v is equal to the root of the multiplication of all this, which is which will eventually give us uh, you know that 2 times 3 is 6 so it will eventually give us uh, 6 times 2 to give us 12 meter per second so solve this out just do using your calculator do 2 times 3 which is 6 times 24 then the root of it will give you the answer that you want so I don't have this so root of 6 times 24 will give us what we want. So V is equal to root of 6 times 24. Because 6 times 24 will give us like 144, which is which the root is 12. A train with an initial velocity 20 meter per second. Is subjected to uniform deceleration of 2 meter per second square. The time required to bring the train to a complete halt is so initial velocity is 20, deceleration is 2. So, what is the time? You also use uh, equation of motion, the one that has initial velocity, acceleration, and time to solve this. So, A 5 seconds, B 10 seconds, C 40 seconds, D 20 seconds. So the answer is 10 seconds. So this is the formula that we are using V equal to U plus AT. Very simple equation of motion formula. Whenever you are given any of these motion questions, you should know the basic equations of motion that you are going to apply in solving such problems. So there are various formulas in motion v square equal to u square plus 2as v equal to u plus at s equal to ut plus half at squared so any of those formulas those are what you use in solving this problem so the initial velocity as we are given is 20 meter per second acceleration is deceleration which is minus 2 meter per second squared this is squared actually since it's decelerating, that's why it's minus. Time t, we don't know. The final velocity is the body has halted. That means it's no longer moving. Velocity, final velocity should be equal to zero. So substituting this in this formula, v is already equal to zero. u is equal to 20 from here. Then minus 2, which is the deceleration, times t. If you make t the subject, you have 10 over 2 to give us 10 seconds. 
from the velocity time graph shown above which of the following quantities cannot be determined you see the equation of the graph of velocity time graph all of us know that the inside gives us uh, total distance so total distance can be determined nice. yeah you can also from the slope determine the acceleration you understand we can determine the acceleration so what else can we not determine from this the answer is the initial acceleration initial you can determine the overall acceleration but we cannot determine the initial acceleration why we cannot determine the initial acceleration is because this motion is not starting from rest that means it has started elsewhere already where we know the velocity but we cannot calculate the acceleration at that point so the initial acceleration of the journey cannot be determined because there is no positive slope at the beginning so very very important we can easily determine the deceleration because we are talking about from this point to this point this is the initial velocity for deceleration and this is the final for deceleration but the initial acceleration we cannot the initial velocity is already given at 60 and the total distance is the space under this so those are the things that can be determined but initial acceleration cannot be determined so in the next class we are going to be looking at another topic known as scalars and vectors thank you very much please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel so that you'll be seeing our videos whenever they come about like and share this video so that other people can see it and make use of it thank you